there are two types of automation in Samplitude Pro X. Track automation and object automation. Track automation can be used with audio or MIDI tracks, whereas object automation can be applied to individual audio objects anywhere in the VIP. I'm going to begin with track automation. You can access all track automation parameters from the track editor in the area under the automation header. If this area isn't showing, click on the arrow to the left of the header to reveal it. Right clicking on the read, effect and parameter elements will open an automation menu. It's worth spending some time getting familiar with this menu. Track automation should be enabled by default. To confirm it is enabled, make sure the show checkbox is ticked. You can access volume and pan automation immediately from the track header. To enable, click the square volume or pan buttons to the left of the horizontal faders. Note, you can also right click on the volume button to access the automation menu. When volume is enabled, a yellow automation curve or envelope will be overlaid on the track for the entire length of the project. This volume curve will reflect the current position of the track volume fader. Moving this fader will adjust the volume automation curve to match. When pan is enabled, a light blue automation curve will be overlaid on the track. Adjusting the horizontal pan fader of the track header or the pan pot of the track editor will adjust the pan curve accordingly. To edit automation curves manually, you need to create automation nodes or points, and you have a choice of mouse modes for this. Universal mouse mode lets you create an automation node by double clicking on the curve. Double click on the node to delete it. You can also delete selected nodes by pressing the delete key on your computer keyboard. Curve, move and grab mode lets you insert an automation node with a single click. Notice the small finger. You can also lasso select and move multiple automation nodes. Object and curve mode lets you insert automation nodes with a single click whilst allowing you to continue with normal object operations. There is a dedicated Draw Volume Curves pencil for specifically drawing in freehand volume curves. Plus, there is a Draw Automation Curves pencil for drawing in freehand curves with any active automation parameter. The currently active automation parameter will always be displayed in the automation effect list. If you are using multiple automation curves, the selected one will be displayed in this list. So if, for example, I select one of the EQ parameters, this is added to the list. You can then use this list to switch between curves. You can automate plugins on a per track basis, including the plugins which come with Samplitude, plus third party VST VSTi plugins. If you open the automation menu, there are several hardwired automation parameters at the bottom of the list. Besides the already mentioned volume and pan, there are also selections for Surround X, Surround Y, Tempo, Aux, Send, and EQ. For this example, I'm going to use the Magix Ecox Delay plugin. Click on the track insert slot and navigate to Delay Reverb Ecox. From the Programs menu at the top, select one of the presets. I'm choosing Preset 3, Saturday's Inserts, as a starting point. Next, open the Automation menu. The newly added effect should now be visible near the bottom, and mousing over will open a list of automatable parameters. I'm choosing parameter 8, Width. An automation curve pertaining to that parameter is now overlaid on the track. 
I'm now going to add some nodes to that automation curve in order to automate a gradual increase of the stereo width. Now when I begin playback, the percentage of stereo width will be controlled by the envelope shape. Notice also that the ECOX stereo width knob moves accordingly. If you want to automate another ECOX parameter, choose it from the automation effect list and the curve for that parameter will also be overlaid on the track. Please note that Samplitude Pro X doesn't have automation lanes at this time, so all automation curves will be superimposed upon each other. However, if you navigate to the automation menu, there are three display choices. One, show only selected curve. In this mode, you must switch between active curves from the automation menu. Two, Show all curves not selectable. This means all curves are displayed, but only the currently selected one remains editable. So this protects you from accidentally adding nodes to another automation curve. Although you can still switch between them from the automation menu. Three. Show all curves selectable. This mode displays all active curves and they are all editable. Choice three is probably the most practical. In this mode, as soon as you click on an unselected curve, it becomes selected. If you want to adjust multiple automation points, click on the first node and then shift click on the last node. Any nodes in between will also be selected. You can then move them together while retaining the relative curve variations. You can also control select multiple non-contiguous automation points. This allows you to move the selected automation points, leaving the unselected ones anchored in position. You can also write automation curves in real time using a keyboard modifier plus the mouse. To do this, open the plugin editor and begin playback. Now press Ctrl plus Alt, then adjust the parameter you want to automate with your mouse. That parameter will now be written in real time to your track. Take note that this method works with all track automation, but not with object automation. If especially dense passages of automation have been created, open the automation menu and choose Edit Selected Curve Thin Out. This menu also contains commands to delete the active curve or to delete all curves for that track. There is also an option to enable snapping of automation nodes. To enable this, press Y and go to General, Use Snap for Automation Curve Points. This works when adjusting existing nodes and uses the active snap value. Now when you move a node, it will snap to the current value. You can use the Alt modifier to bypass snapping.
Here's how to automate the AUX send of a vocal track to an AUX effect bus. First, we need to add a new AUX bus from the menu item Track, Insert New Tracks, New AUX Bus. I'm now clicking on the AUX bus insert slot and navigating to Delay Reverb, Variverb Pro. I'm choosing one of the AUX init models from the preset list. These are intended to be used on AUX buses. Select the vocal track, open the automation menu and choose AUX Send 1 AUX Send 1. The corresponding automation curve should now be visible along the bottom of the track. Also the name AUX Send will be displayed in the effect box of the automation pane plus one AUX send will be displayed in the parameter box below. Now insert a single automation node using your preferred mouse mode. I'm using curve move and grab mode. Then create a second node further along to the right of the timeline. I'm left clicking and dragging that node upwards to create a transition from node one. Now click on the small arrow to the left of the AUX header in the track editor to reveal the AUX send pane. Click the first button below the arrow to enable the first send. Doing that should turn on that individual AUX send. Make sure the master AUX send button is enabled as well. Place the play cursor before the first node and begin playback. You should now hear a gradual increase in reverb for that track. If you prefer to use hardware when writing automation, Samplitude supports a good range of control surfaces. Support is included for the Avid Artist series using the Yukon protocol, SSL Nucleus and Mackie Control. Press Y to open the system options and select Hardware Controller to enter the Hardware Controller setup window. You can activate Yukon by selecting the Activate Yukon checkbox. For other controllers, click on the Add New button to browse a list of factory presets for supported controllers. You can also create custom mappings for unsupported controllers.